بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما so the next thing we'll try to understand the iq v2 phases like how exactly the process at the back end goes so if you compare with iq v1 generally we have discussed two phases where uh, if if you just revise the iq v1 process so the first phase is it is going to build a secure channel between the two endpoints and actually it applies the ipsec in the phase 2 so if you just logically compare that with the iq v v2 as well here also we have a two phase negotiation process same like we can say like phase one phase two kind of thing but there is no exact phase one phase two kind of thing here so again when you talk about version one so the version one generally it, it uses somewhere around six or nine messages but whereas in the case of version 2 this complete process is combined into four messages so there will be around uh, four messages which are used of course you can see in the diagram here there are eight to nine messages but actually these messages are combined together into four messages and technically here also we can say the same thing like uh, technical names like sa child sa these are the technical names for phase 1 and phase 2 whereas the phase one, the Ike essay is more about exchanging the Ike messages. Uh, like generally, we call it as Ike essay, same like building a secure channel between the two endpoints. Like if you compare with the previous version, and the actual IPsec will be applied in the in the phase two. That is like child essay, uh, where you where the particular both the peers will decide what will be the encapsulation. And the protocols will be used for encrypting the or hashing the trap. So technically, the names are different, but the process will be uh, the same. But actually, you have combined the messages into uh, it. The messages are actually grouped uh, here. So we'll try to separate them in two parts. So the first thing we'll try to understand the phase one. In the phase one, we'll see again the two two step negotiation process in that what exactly that and then we'll and then we'll jump into the phase two as well where how exactly it is going to apply the ipsec and there is something called create child essay and and informational messages so let's get into the phase one first now the phase one is again divided into two step negotiation process so the first step is they will exchange the ike proposals so let's see the first one exchanging the ike proposal messages now ike proposals are like first the initiator let's say this this router is initiator it is going to send out a request like the first message we can say the first message is going to send out something like ike sa initiate request and this message is sent from the initiator to the responder the opposite side and this actually this message contains the security association proposals and what exactly this proposal these proposals include what will be the cryptographic algorithms will be using like what will be the algorithm i'll be using for encryption and what will be my hashing algorithm i'll be using and also it includes the other options like what will be the defi helmy case like which Defi Helmy group I'll be using for secure exchange of the keys, like how I'm going to derive the keys on both the sides. And additionally, it also includes something called nonce values. Nonce is kind of temporary random number it is going to generate. And based on this random number, the initiator will send a number. And based on that number, the responder is going to combine that number with with the agreed other algorithms and return back uh, with some with some number again the nonce value now these nonce values which are being replied by that particular responder it has to match uh, basically what is sent by the initiator so there is some kind of algorithm for that now these are the values which are being exchanged and inside the security as a proposal messages now in the second message this is the first message and the second message again it is going to respond back with the essay proposal messages 
So technically, we call this as SA initiate uh, probably response message. This again include what is the algorithm I'm, I'm going to use for encryption, for integrity hashing, and then what are the what is the Defi Helme group I'll be using for deriving the keys, and then the nonce value. Now, nonce value again, as I said, it has to match what is being sent by the initiator. So if it matches, then it says okay, uh, there is no uh, there is no uh, problem. But whereas if that particular uh, do not match or it will reject any message which do not have the right value of the right nonce value. So these messages are exchanged initially. That's what happens in the in the first step, the first message and the second message we can say. Now again, whatever the information being exchanged, whatever the algorithms being exchanged, these will be used in the next step. That is the next step. So probably the next step is like the third message and the fourth messages. Now these messages generally happens in this in this process. And based on this algorithms which are being uh, exchanged or negotiated, and based on that they will decide what will be the authentication method they will be using for the peers, and how the authentication messages are going to be protected, and what is the encryption algorithm being used, or what is the Defi Helme group. Uh, value or the key material, the Defi Helmi group will be used for securely deriving the keys. But again, one more thing we need to know is authentication uh, can be asymmetric authentication as well. Now, probably if you want to, if you just try to compare this process, whatever with previous version, so this actually combines one to four messages of your main mode. So in your Ike V1, there are first four messages. So these four messages can be compared with this particular step here. So next thing, let's move on to the next messages. Like we have seen the first two messages. So basically the first two messages happens here. The message one sent by the initiator and the message two is being like a response from the responder. Now this message one and message two includes the security association path proposals, SA proposal information. And this information will be used in the next step for authentication and the identity exchange. So the next step is like Ike auth authenticating the remote peer and the identity exchange. Now in these messages, what they do is they will they, they generally do a something called authenticating the remote peer. Like the previous messages are not encrypted, but now from here onwards. The, the message three and the message four will be more encrypted. So these messages will be used for authenticating the remote pair. Now again, the authentication options include like the authentication can be a pre-shared keys on both the sides, or it can use some kind of digital certificates, or even in the Ike V2, we have something called EAP authentication method, where you can integrate with the existing authentication method used in the LAN in your network that can be integrated for the VPN as well. And again, the authentication method, as we discussed, it also supports something called asymmetric authentication, where you can have different authentication methods on both the sides. So again, depends upon the type of the authentication message you are using, the content or what exactly these messages carry that will vary. And once authentication is successful, it will move to the next phase, that is your phase two. If you compare this with a with your Ike V1, we can say it initiates the phase two also. Means the phase two process also happens in this third and fourth messages. But again, I'm not going to cover uh, right now on this. So I'll be more explaining this part. But again, in probably in the next, uh, once I complete this, probably I'll move on to this process where uh, we'll, we'll try to understand what, what exactly happens in the, in the phase two where it is going to initiate the IPsec, uh, IPsec essay and then create some child essays. Probably we'll talk about that, that later. Now, once this authentication is uh, successful, so it's going to use different authentication methods, as I said. And also, apart from the authentication method, it also includes something called uh, asset traffic selector payload. So this basically tells what traffic should be applied with IPsec like we generally configure something called interesting traffic where we are going to tell 
if the traffic matches this ACL with a specific source, specific destination, specific ports, so then only apply the IPsec. So that is again uh, included in this step. And additionally, they may exchange the certificates. If you are using certificates, again, this is kind of optional. So if you're using digital certificates, then for authentication, probably there will be some exchange of the certificates as well in these messages. And also uh, there is an optional configuration exchange message. Now this is more common in some kind of remote VPNs or some other, other VPNs. Probably what happens is you can, from the centralized device, you can push the configurations. Just like there is something called reverse route injection, where whenever the remote peer connects, so it automatically installs a specific route, how to reach back to the main head office. So, and also you can push some kind of configurations uh, where the remote peers can get automatically uh, some part of the configurations added to their, uh, to their devices or the remote sites. So which actually avoids to configure each and every device remotely. So again, this depends upon uh, the type of the VPNs we use. That's the reason I said these are kind of optional. Because if I'm using certificate-based authentication, then the certificate information will also be exchanged. And configuration exchange also will be there if you are trying to push some configurations to the, to the remote site. And again, as I said, it creates also creates something called child SM. Now, this is more on the phase two, where it is going to actually apply the IPsec for your, uh, for your traffic. Again, this part is also uh, in the in the message three and the message four. So, so we have something like message one, message two in this part where they exchange the security association parameters. And in the third and the fourth step, they not only authenticate, they will also exchange the authentication informations and also decide what traffic should be applied with IPsec, certificates, configuration exchange, and even the phase two uh, information also will be exchanged in this in this step only. But again, as I said, I'll try to get into this uh, particular step a little bit more in detail in our next slides. 